Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Bouguet, and I am the Assistive Technology Specialist here in Loudoun County Public Schools. And this video is meant to help you find resources to use technology to help support learners learn whatever they want to learn. So you can imagine technology is vast. There's lots of stuff out there uh, out in the world and also in Loudoun County Public Schools that can help people learn what they're trying to learn. We have tried to put some of that information here on uh, two different websites. And so that's where I, I kind of want to do a little tour today of this website or these websites, these different tools to help you navigate and find materials. Um, so the first website that I want to show you is something called the Inclusive Design website. And you can get to this website by going to bit.ly slash LCPS inclusive design. That's bit.ly slash LCPS inclusive design. And when you go to this website, what you're going to find is some uh, resources on how to use technology to design educational experiences for everybody. And also as, uh, as educators and parents supporting our learners, it's meant to be a place where you can say, okay, I have a student that's having difficulties with fill in the blank. And you can go here and find technology that might help you with those different problem areas. So let me give you a little tour of the website, show you around a little bit, and then um, uh, and then I'm going to take you to another resource on very on a very specific topic. So this this particular website, like I said, it's called Inclusive Design. And when you go there, the landing page uh, it says a little bit, tells you a little bit about what is inclusive design. Uh, it talks, there's some, some text here that describes what inclusive design is, and there's a little video that explains it. Um, and we go on to, to give some more information. But if you continue to scroll down at the bottom, you'll see these, these big blue circles. And the text says reading, writing, STEM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And then we have executive functioning and research uh, and research and studying. And these different hyperlinks take correspond with pages up here at the top of the website. Uh, they take you to the same spot. And that is where if you are, if you were supporting a learner that is working towards, you know, trying to learn how to read or trying to learn how to write or um, working to organize themselves or whatever, you can click on these different resources and find some technology tools available in LCPS that can help that individual uh, achieve that goal. Before we go over there and explore those, I want to show you this other part of the website, which is the Ensuring Materials Work for All Learners part. And so if you click on that page, you'll see that um, when we're learning, uh, we often use materials. And those materials can be designed in a way that work for the widest range of people, uh, the widest range of abilities as possible. And so this gives you some information about what that could look like and how you design those materials for the widest range of people uh, with different abilities. So I, I won't spend too much time on this because this, this video is specific to uh, finding resources about technology, but I just wanted to let you know that it was here and that it exists and it gives, it's, it's a place where you could um, kind of peruse and see if, if you are making materials for, for, for different learners that you're supporting, this might be a good website to start with because it explains how you would create the material or find materials that are created for everybody. Okay, so now to the crux of this video. I am trying to find a resource or a way to support a learner with uh, insert um, the, the, the area they're trying to learn. Let's say it's reading. Let's say it's writing. Well, that's where we have these supports over here. So the first uh, tab that I'm going to show you is the reading supports tab. And when you click there, uh, the way we have broken down the technology is based on what do you want to, the technology to do? Like, how can the technology actually support the, the learner? And so we call that the function of the technology. 
So what's the function? What are we break it down based on functions? So one function that can help people become better readers is text to speech, essentially hitting a play button or doing something with the technology so that the text on the screen is read out loud. So people don't have to read it just with their eyes. They could read it with their ears. They can experience that text in multiple modalities, in multiple ways. So we have text-to-speech, and then we have the technology, some of the technology that we have available here in Loudoun County Public Schools that would help somebody use that function. So we have a tool called Read and Write for Google Chrome that uh, we explain uh, what that, how to use text-to-speech using Read and Write for Google Chrome. And you know, I, I want to point out the uh, the little gray area down here underneath this, it says additional resources. Here are some other parts um, that might be of interest to you uh, based on you know whether, the, uh, whether that's something your student needs or not. Now we also support, uh, there's many users of iOS devices out there in LCPS. And so there's a way to have text read out loud, not just on a Chromebook, but on an iOS device. And of course, there are many users that have a bring your own technology and they might use an iOS device based on bring your own technology. And so here's a little video explaining how you can have text read out loud on an iOS device, like an iPad. So there are other features here. I won't spend too much time. I just wanted to explain that one because the, the this part here explains what the feature or function is of the technology. And then uh, there's the, the, the way it's broken down is little tutorials on how you can access that feature using tools available in Loudoun County Public Schools. So we've got simplifying text. Um, We've got how to provide picture support to help someone become a better reader. We've got different ways to access audiobooks, which helps support reading. Um, and so that's where we've got reading supports. And then, of course, down here at the bottom, we have links to additional resources because this is just one website. But there are other resources available in Loudoun County Public Schools that helps, helps people who are learning to become uh, more proficient readers. Okay, now we also have writing supports. And so same same sort of formula, we have broken it down by function. And so we have word prediction. I bet many of you use word prediction every day, either in your email or if you might be texting on your phone. As you start typing, a word is predicted for you. So you don't have to complete the, you don't have to complete the um, typing out the entire word. Uh, the technology helps you do that. Well, that actually helps people become better spellers. So we've got word prediction. We got speech to text, which is using our voice to produce text. Um, and so there's different technologies that help us do that. We've got spelling and grammar check. And then of course, we've got even a more additional resources. Now we also have science, technology, engineering, and math. And this provides you with different functions of technology that help you do those sorts of, learn those sorts of things, including, now you say typing, handwriting, and spectrum. Now it says, typing, handwriting, and speech recognition here, well, that can often be a barrier for math instruction. And so there is different technology that can help people do that math in different ways, including typing it using their handwriting or using speech recognition. And we have technology here in LCPS that helps you do that. We also have executive functioning supports which is essentially how you get yourself organized and how you complete the your learning objectives for for yourself. Um, and what we have those broken down here is how do I manage my time and what technology do we have that helps you learn how to manage your time, such as a calendar, as timers, alerts and alarms, a maintaining some sort of schedule and following that schedule. How do I get my tasks done? You know, what should I do first? And then how do I get them completed by having some sort of checklist? How do I organize and locate materials? Again, you know, I, um, I, I, can, I, I, I kept it somewhere. I found it. I, I made it. I know I made it. How do I find it again? Well, here are resources that will help you do that and so on and so forth. And then the last page we have here is how to help students become experts at research and studying. Essentially, how do, how do we help them become expert learners? And so we have different technologies that support researching, um, becoming, you know, like I said, someone who can research and find information and then all uh, accurate information and then note taking strategies um, and so on. There's, like I said, I, I don't have to go through all these functions and stuff for you to explore um, on your own. 
Now, there is one other feature of this website that I want to show you about if I go back here to the home page. And that is, you'll notice here, there's something called the blog. But before I click on that link, let me just explain what I think is going to happen, what we've seen happen in the past. Um, I think what's going to happen is many people will watch this video. You might go to this website and you might start exploring some of this website. And then life kicks in and you get busy with family and work and all the other things that happen in life. And three weeks from now, four weeks from now, another problem might occur and you might forget that this website existed or where what, where did I find that website again? Where was it? And we recognize that as an, as an issue, like having all of this information on one website is a good house for it and a good place for it, but you might forget that it exists. So we wanted to combat that problem by having it become a constant steady drip that comes to you um, frequently so that it is always something that is easy to find and easy to come back to. And the and and something that is uh, that is when I say constant drip, it's something that is you're constantly seeing that's coming up frequently for you. And so what we put together is something called the inclusive design blog. And when you click on this link, um, it takes you to this website where the blog is embedded into this website. And so the way this works is that the inclusive design blog is that it's going to be individual blog posts. And we've put a couple samples here, but we just launched this at the time of this recording, this video. We only have a couple posts uh, right now, but we're working uh, diligently to provide more posts. And so the idea here is that it's short bite-sized bits of information, maybe a paragraph or two, and then a little bit of um, the uh, maybe a video that goes along with it or other support material that goes along with the concept being shared in the blog post. But the way this comes to you is that you go over here and you um, sign up for it. See where it says never miss a post? Well, if you were to put your email address in here, like if I were to type in my email address, and then I hit subscribe, it's going to say, hey, go over and confirm in your email that you want to actually subscribe. And then every time we publish a new post to the blog, it's going to show up in your email. You'll see a heading in your email that says, oh, here's the title of the blog post. And so you will constantly see, as long as you're checking your email, uh, whenever we want launch a new post, it'll pop up in your email and it will be a reminder to you that these that this website exists and that these tools exist. Um, and in time, as the blog continues to grow and we put more and more uh, information there, the blog itself will become a very robust resource. And that itself will be, be, become a place where you can search for more information. So um, over here on the blog, you'll see that there are things called categories. So if you were really interested in, um, let's say, reading supports, you could click on the reading support category and it would take you to all of the posts that have that have been uh, tagged as, as reading supports. You can also then uh, search the blog. So that'd be another way. You can click in there and type in um, uh, search items. And the and over time, the, this will be a place where you can go and find information specific to your needs, just in the same way where this, uh, the inclusive design website is built, where you can go and find specific needs. Okay, so that is um, the tour of the inclusive design website and the blog. I hope you go over and subscribe. Um, and then... The, how I want to end this video is showing you one more resource, and this is specific to people who use augmentative slash alternative communication or communication devices. Um, and so that is another website that we've put together called Learning Language with Augmentative slash Alternative Communication. And this is, um, again, meant to support anyone who is supporting a user of an AAC system. And what this says is uh, it gives you some kind of background about what that is. Uh, it gives you some ways to teach using how to use those communication devices um, and how to learn language using the, that device. And again, we tried to keep this very simple um, and very, uh, the, in, in uh, a term we've been using when we put this together was tight. How do we keep the information very streamlined for, for anyone who comes here? 
Um, so it's a very short website that just has a couple different videos, a couple different slide decks, a little bit of text that explains how to use that communication device and how to implement that communication device and how to support someone learning language using that communication device. Uh, that's on the getting started page. And then we also have how do I create opportunities to practice using AAC? And this is meant to really help families at home. So when you have that communication device at home, you might be having a shared reading experience. Well, here's a little example of how that might work and a couple things you might say. At home, we're going to guess many people cook at home. Here's how you could work with that communication device while cooking. This is one of our speech therapists, Shonda, and she gives a little example here of how you can use the communication device while doing a cooking activity. And again, I won't go through all of them, but just notice we have different, um, different, uh, different examples here uh, throughout the day of where people can implement those communication devices and teach students how to use them um, in these very naturalistic uh, things, uh, schedule in, of the day. Oh, and I should say the way to get to this website is by going to bit.ly slash LCPS learning language with AAC. Again, that's bit.ly slash LCPS learning language with AAC. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of different websites and resources we have available uh, to help you support your learners. Thanks, everybody.